the Bible tells us, my son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the center of your heart. The same type of instruction given to Joshua. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Prophet Micah said, The man of wisdom the, will see God's word. My people perish not because of anything else, but because of ignorance. And to perish does not mean to be wiped out in one day. Little, little death. Little, little death. One foolishness there takes this money out of your pocket. One foolishness there destroys this relationship. One foolishness there does something. And the enemy is glad. Because the enemy... The only enemy we know we have is Satan and is at the root of the ignorance. He is comfortable that you, you do not have light in that matter. But the light of life will shine into our affairs in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The psalmist prayed, Lord, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. He said, you through your commandments make me wiser than my enemies for they are ever with me. So when you cry, hey, enemy, enemy, God is not ignorant of the fact that there are enemies. He says you are in this world, you are not of this world. He said, I have set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So God is aware. But then he has given us the master stroke. What we can apply and this confit hell and all that hell has to bring towards us. Hallelujah. In Colossians chapter 2, I'll just read quickly verse 8. Please, in your private time, you can read verses 1 to 8. It says, Beware, beware, be careful, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy an empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ the human philosophy can derail you oh this is what they, oh, the, the, this is what they said and this is what um, oh, and as long as you exalt what somebody else has said, what other reports have said above what God has said you detract from your own glory. You detract from your own victory. What reports we have, thank God for the efforts. Thank God for scientific reports. Thank God for all the things because they are very important. In fact, when you have those things, then you know how to apply the wisdom of God for victory. But you must know what to exalt. And the Bible warns us, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty the seat. Nice sounding words. According to the tradition of men, this is how they've always done it. It is wisdom to seek better ways. It is wisdom to go to God and ask for the better way of doing something. Anyone who loves wisdom will embrace change. Remember, we are agents of change. We take the light of the gospel to the nations with Christ-like maturity. I, I read something. I just digress a little, and then we we'll go back to our story. Um, the, uh, the governor of New York State in 1829, a century, a century plus ago, went to complain to the president president uh, was it Johnson or whatever um, and complained to the president that ah, the new cars that are being made they are now the speed has increased to 15 kilometers per hour and that God didn't intend for people to drive at such breakneck speed 
It says, surely, in fact, I liked it so much. It says, surely, the Almighty never intended people should travel at such breakneck speed. But here we are today. We travel at thousands of miles per hour, and you're having a good massage. You are playing your games. You're on your iPad. You're doing your writings, and you're just going safely. Amen? There is progression in God. So it's not about, oh, um, it's, it's an ancient scripture or it's an ancient word. No, God is moving. He is imparting people with wisdom. But we must never forget our source. Even as we embrace change and development. Amen? God, our God, is the author of all true progress. Don't let's be deceived. He is the only, he is the author of true progress. And so we must never stop asking him for the better way. Never, never stop asking him for the better way. Don't think, oh, this, they've done this and then they are the ones who know it best. No. He is, he has been made our wisdom. And he said, don't let anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men or the basic principles of the world. Anything that is not according to Christ, Christ who has been made unto us wisdom, when it is not according to him, step back, take another look. Amen? Even in your thoughts, when the thoughts come, step back, put it against the mirror of the word and know whether this is wisdom or foolishness. Like I said, this wisdom is not inherited and you don't... And I will quickly want us to read before I close this morning. I want us to look at the wise king, Solomon. I saw some key things in that passage. 1 Kings chapter 3 verses 3 to 13. From th those verses that we are going to quickly look at, you will see that it takes a genuine heart for God to gain access into the heart of God. All these things we are saying, you must have a genuine love for God. And we deal with him before whom everything lays bare. We deal with him before whom everything lays bare. But when there is that genuineness of heart, you will have access. You will have access. It's not enough to have to, to know. We must enter in. In the name of Jesus Christ, I believe the anointing on this world this hour will quicken us and enable us to focus on him. Now let's look at that first Kings chapter 3, verses 3 to 13. Solomon loved the Lord. That was the first thing there. Walking in the statutes and practices of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burned incense in the high places. The king went to Gibeon, near Jerusalem, where stood the tabernacle and the bronze altar, to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. One thousand burnt offerings Solomon offered on the altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give you, Solomon. Solomon said, you have shown to your servant David, my father, great mercy and loving kindness, according as he walked before you in faithfulness, righteousness, and uprightness of heart with you. And you have kept for him this great kindness and steadfast love that you have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a lad. 
in wisdom and experience. I know not how to go out or come in. Your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen. A great people who cannot be counted for multitude. So give your servant an understanding mind and a hearing heart. Give your servant an understanding mind and a hearing heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and bad. That's wisdom. Being able to discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge and rule this, your great people? And then God, the Bible says, it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself understanding to recognize or you have not asked for, for long life or for riches nor for the lives of your enemies note that please you have not asked for long life or for riches nor for the lives of your enemies but have asked for yourself understanding to recognize what is just and right behold I have done as you asked I have given you a wise discerning mind so that no one before you was your equal nor shall any arise after you equal to you I have also given you what you have not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings equal to you all your days Immediately after, in that same chapter, it was tested. And in verse 28 of that chapter, 3, 1 Kings, the Bible records for us, And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had made, and they stood in awe of him, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do justice. The wisdom of God was in him to do justice. Quickly, so that we can look at this before we go, I want us to look at a few things from that. First, Solomon recognized that he needed to make his own request for wisdom to rule. The other thing is that first line. Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statutes and practices of David his father. But in spite of that, he loved God. He was walking in the, the same pattern that had been left. He still made a request to God for wisdom. He didn't think the wisdom his father operated with was sufficient and he could inherit it. You can't inherit wisdom. You can receive wisdom from God. And Solomon recognized this. That it's not about my family lineage. It's not about the fact that my father was described as wise. Many times the Bible tells us that David behaved himself wisely. David the anointed king. David a man, a, a man after God's heart. David the friend of God. Even prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 55 talked about David being about his wisdom about his relationship with God. But that notwithstanding, Solomon recognized he must receive from God. And he prioritized the people of God. He prioritized the assignment that God had for him. He didn't go into a place of prayer to just ask for riches. There were enemies. There were people who had offended his father David. There were people who had thrown mud at his father that he needed to tackle. But he didn't pursue that. And that's why the Bible tells us that God was pleased. That what he asked from God pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked, had asked. God said to him, because you have asked this and you have not asked for long life yeah, it's not an offense to ask for long life. But he said, with long life, I will satisfy you. It's already given. If you are in him, it is already given. It's a promise. It's covenanted. 
It's covenanted. But I said, and or for riches. Christ has been made, Christ purchased for us. He obtained for us riches, honor, blessings, glory. Revelations chapter 5. He didn't receive those things for himself. He doesn't need it in heaven. But he received it for us. And that's why he was able to teach us in Matthew 6 that all these things will be added unto you. Just seek you first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. May we encounter peace today in the name of Jesus Christ. May we see from this example of this wise king of how not to turn the altar of prayer into just give me, give me, give me. But to connect with true wisdom, what will be pleasing to God? To, you know, uh, the other thing is, the Bible says there that he did not ask for the lives of his enemies. Many times we are, okay, God has given us long life. We have asked for prosperity. Now we turn to God again. Kill them, blindfold them, do this. Enemy, enemy. Fire, hell, everything. Bind. Solomon was the king of Israel. There were enemies, plenty. Both in his father's house and outside his father's house. But he did not ask for that. Let's know what to do with our prayer altar. It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this and God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for long life for riches. He said, I will now add all those things to you. And for us, the New Testament believers, we know that all these things are taken care of. In your private time, when you go back to read that verse, uh, those verses of scripture, you will notice there are about 12 key principles in that passage. Apostle James, writing to us, the New Testament believer, said in James chapter 1 verse 5, If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of, the, of God to give him who gives everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproach or fault finding. He gives it to us when we ask. So it's, it's, not, it's not just Solomon. We can go, we can ask. Yes, Christ has been made unto us wisdom. But unless we recognize what has been given and embrace it and walk in it, it's of no use. This is a season when we must embrace wisdom. This is a season when we have seen the folly of, our, of human pride. Our know-it-all. We've seen how the simplest thing can throw us if God is not in it, if he's not backing us. Solomon was not the first king to offer sacrifices. But sacrifices are useless without a heart that fears the Lord. Without a heart that fears and loves the Lord. And of course, if you genuinely fear the Lord and love the Lord, you will love your fellow men. If you love your fellow men, if you love your fellow men, the Bible says, faith only works by love. Faith works by love. And without faith, you can't please God. Hallelujah. So, please, let's guard up the loins of our hearts. Let's make fresh decisions today. How do you hold God in reverent fear? In the choice of what you do secretly, how do you hold God in reverent fear? Or in the choice of what you do openly, how do you hold God in reverent fear? In what you read, in what you eat, because your body is a temple of the living God. How do you hold God 
in reverent fear. Is he in your reckoning at any point in time? In what you think? King Saul offered sacrifices and it was offensive to God. Uzzah, King Uzzah offered sacrifices and he became leprous because it was offensive to God. Ananias and Sapphira because there was deception. The Bible tells us as I wrap, wrap, round this, up this message this morning, I believe the Holy Spirit will begin to work on us in our hearts from these scriptures. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible tells us, Hallelujah. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. We I pray this morning that we will enter into that realm where people will wonder, realm where we will walk as an amazement to our generation because that's what God has said, that I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And I want you to know, tell God this morning that you really love him. You love him and God will be pleased with what you ask or your, at your prayer altar in the name of Jesus Christ. And this morning, I'll just give us a quick checklist before we go. A quick checklist. But one word, one thing I will want to encourage us with in addition to all we have said, is that you must not give up on yourself. You must not give up on yourself because wisdom has a growth process. Wisdom has a growth process. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God's incarnate himself. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 2, Verse, verses 40 and verse 50 and, and 52 that the child grew and became strong in spirit filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men so please don't give up on yourself don't give up on the people you are interceding for there is a growth process. Let's continue in our love for God. Let's continue in our fear for him. He will continue to teach us. He will continue to impart us. As long as we keep looking into the perfect law of liberty, in, as long as we continue to connect with the word of God, darkness will never be able to comprehend us. Amen. And so, before we go, the wisdom checklist number one the characteristics of those who receive godly wisdom they are loyal and kind they trust in the Lord they turn their back on evil they listen and learn from the word of life they do righteousness they know where to find knowledge and understanding they hate pride, arrogance, corruption, and deceit. They respect and fear God. They love correction. Remember what we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3. The 75% of what the word of God does to us is correction, guidance. They love correction and are teachable their conversations, their communications are marked by graciousness of speech. Please, let's just bow our head this morning wherever we are seated and just talk to God this morning. Receive, embrace him afresh this morning. Ask for 
that wisdom, the pure wisdom that is from above. He does not get offended that we are asking. He gives liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching us or fault finding that, ah, is this all you know? No. We have come to our Father and he's, he wants to give it to us. Christ has been made unto us wisdom. Christ received for us riches, honor, wisdom, blessing, power. He has received them for us. And this morning, as we dedicated, and we have dedicated time to come into his presence, we have put everything else aside. Just as Solomon put everything else aside and went out, left the place of his comfort and convenience of his palace, traveled to the place of worship, and he met with God. This morning, as you have put everything else aside, temples of the living God, yes, we are. But we must, we, we, we have come together, either online or, in, or physically, as those, for those of us who are present in the building, we want to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Father who answers our prayers without fault finding. Thank you, mighty God for a fresh baptism of wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for your breath upon us, the inspiration of the Almighty, the vital force that makes us. Thank you, Lord, for grace, grace, grace to shine forth, to show forth your glory in the land of the living. That's the whole essence of man. That's the highest assignment we have to glorify you. Let the wisdom we have obtained in this hour, let it reflect, Lord God, and let it glorify you in our finances, in our relationships, in our kingdom work, in our evangelism, in our service, in everything that we do. Let your glory be seen and let wisdom be our anchor, our strength, our foundation in Jesus' precious name. And the people of God say, Amen. Hallelujah. Please, if there's anyone who needs to meet with the Savior this morning, Wherever you are, just know that one thing I enjoy about God is that the, the Bible tells us that Jesus has not come to judge us. He has not come to condemn us, but to restore us unto himself. And so there is no condemnation to you if you just need to have that new relationship with Christ. And this morning, please just invite him into your heart and say, Lord Jesus, Please come into my heart. Fill my heart. I'm sorry for the sins I've committed. I'm sorry for I've ignored your ways. And I ask that you come and live in me. Be my Lord and my Savior. And let me walk in the wisdom that has been spoken about this morning. So that your name will be glorified in my life, in my home, in all my affairs. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. And God bless you. The Lord enrich you. The Lord increase you on every side. And cause the light of his countenance to rest upon you. Shalom. Peace. I'm sure we have on the 
system, our um, bank uh, details and all that. So for anyone who wants to give an offering, it's free will. Um, so the work of the Lord in this place, please feel free to go online and use the details that you will see on our website, on the channels to give. And the Lord increase you more and more, you and your children. We just pray the blessings of God upon every seed that is given towards the work of the kingdom. Amen. <laughs>